The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidist and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Prop Hero began his career as an M&A investment banker for UBS in London. So I'm so sure he's used to working long hours. That's probably where he learned how to work long hours. Was an associate partner at McKinsey and Company where he was leading the data and artificial intelligence practice. Okay, that's going to be useful experience, I'm sure. And is now co-founder and co-CEO of Prop Hero. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Michael Roger. Welcome. Thanks welcome. for having me. Not at all. Woo. So you've got a fair bit of experience there. I'm really excited to see how you've applied that um, to property, but you know, an Australian property because we're all a bit obsessed in this country uh, with bricks and mortar and property. But before we do that, before we dive into Prop Hero. I'd love to take just a little moment to get to know you through your use of technology. So first up, and the audience all know this is coming because I do this every interview, uh, what is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Well, I do. So apart from the most basic, simple one, uh, just a smiling one, I think the one I use yep. the most with my friend is the surfing emoji, which is a <gasps> sign saying, hey guys, let's go to the water. Uh, I think it's the one I use the most. Nice. Fantastic. Oh, we love to hear. Look, water babies are the best babies. Um, <laughs> you know, this, the the ocean is, well, I mean, we're so lucky here in Australia, but the ocean is the way to, um, I certainly get scented. I notice when exactly. I haven't even been near the sound of the ocean for a long time. You know, oh, there's something about neural pathways or something. There's something that it just sort of realigns you, which is fantastic. I try to go every day. It's part of my balance. Oh, Okay, now I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, no, that's on my list. 2024, that's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm not far off given where we are, but, you know, we all get busy, don't we? So now our second question we have in terms of your tech use, if you had to get rid of everything off your smartphone and you were only allowed three apps on it, which three would you keep? Well, the first one is obvious, emails. And contrary yep. to common belief, it's not because I'm uh, trapped in it, but actually because <laughs> it sets me free. Because then I, I can actually I can actually work from anywhere around the globe. So actually, like emails on my phone make me free. Second is my camera. I'm just like uh, feeling very often like very nostalgic, and I just love taking pictures uh, of my family, my friends, my trips. And so I felt you know like it's just like such an amazing feature. And the third one, of course, is the Prop Hero app. Of course, as everyone of should, course. right? <laughs> exactly. We should all have that. It's funny. You're, I, you know, just our previous episode, somebody mentioned camera and it's so interesting because I'm going through a bit of a process of pulling together some materials for some social stuff I'm doing, social media stuff, and looking for older photos of me. And of course, for my generation, we just didn't have this thing in our pocket that you could take photos with yeah. all the time, right? So there's whole portions of my life I don't have any photos of, you know, whereas these days you'd have everything. You've captured everything. Best tip ever, you have apps to print pictures on your phone, download one and print pictures. It just makes it so nice. And I've started doing it now and having like, like physical photo albums yes. and it's even better. Like do it, it, it takes is. two minutes and it's amazing. 
Isn't it? In fact, oh, the listener can't see this, but behind me right now, I've found a tool like that that turns your photos into um, Polaroids. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah, then I they send see. them out to you. And so yeah. I've all the love, great places we've been Amazing. and stuff we've done and I've got it behind me because I realized when I'm looking at my screen talking to people like you, I'm often looking at myself or my background. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so for me, I wanted it to be more interesting too. So I'm right there with you in terms of capturing our photos. All right. Let's dive into prop heroes, shall we? So before we sort of dive into the detail, let's go really high level. Where does prop hero sit in the tech space, you know, in whether it's fintech or advice tech? What sort of category does it generally fall under? What do you generally get compared against? Yeah. So we are at the frontier of uh, fintech and prop tech uh, yep. as we are the new way to invest in property. So in short with prop hero, if you want to invest in property, we'll do everything for, for you end to end. Defining your uh, investment strategy, uh, finding your uh, home loan, finding the best deals using our AI algorithm, uh, negotiating the price, renovating the property, managing the property, tracking your wealth over time. So we are actually replacing both buyer's agents and property financial advisors. And that's why we really see ourselves at the frontier of uh, fintech and prop tech. And so, well, when you think about like other players in the industry, well, in Australia, you mostly, you mostly have all, I would say, old school players, like traditional players, traditional yep. buyers, agents, traditional yes. financial planners or, or financial advisors. Yep. In the US, you have one player who's somewhat comparable to prop hero. It's called Roofstock. Uh, and they also like help you invest in a modern way uh, yep. with the caveat that they don't use data and AI to find the absolute best deals. But apart from that, they are like well, digital digitizing the property wealth journey is pretty much the same. Yeah, okay. So this is something, so the tool itself certainly isn't built or otherwise based in Australia. This is something that you're applying to multiple different markets around the world. Is that is that right? That's true. So we started in Australia and you cannot hear it, but I'm actually half Australian. Uh, <laughs> so we started launching in Australia and I think we have like something like 30 team members in Australia. Uh, then we opened a, a few markets in Europe where we saw like massive opportunities and we recently opened Indonesia. So we are investing in <laughs> Bali now. Uh, big, big, big wow. market for Aussies uh, because yeah, like if you do it well, it can be very profitable. Uh, yeah. And uh, and now we are we are planning for 2024 to open a few new international markets. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about where the um the idea was sourced from, or what triggered this for you and for the team. You know, what was what was the gap, or what was the challenge for people that you felt you needed to step into that that birthed Prop Hero? Well, so before Prop Hero, I was working at McKinsey. And I mm -hmm. had a little bit of money, but no time. And I wanted to invest my savings across multiple types of investments. Yeah. Buying shares, ETFs, cryptos, etc. is so easy. You have apps for it. To buy um, real estate, I hired buyer's agents uh, and I was so frustrated. And it, there was supposed to be the most famous one in the industry. But still, everything was manual. No data was used. So everything was right. based on gut feeling. And I could tell that there was some, um, I would say, like incentives for them to have me buy in some areas, depending on where they are located, whether I have friends, etc. Right. Whereas me, as a data-oriented person, I wanted to have data analysis and facts to know where to invest. So, yeah. well, I actually lost quite a lot of money uh, with, uh, with these buyer's agents, but best thing that could ever happen to me, I thought, well, I'm spending my days uh, reinventing industries with data and AI. Let's mm. do the same for real estate. And so that's how Prop Hero was born. And, uh, and yeah, and since then, we keep tracking by how much we outperform the market. And it's like consistently like 170% higher uh, than the market performance. And so, uh, so yeah, like, look, that's how it was born from my own pain of investing myself in property. Okay. So <laughs> then you've got... Case, right? <laughs> it, it is, right? We're just, okay, I've had it enough. <laughs> I need to exactly. solve this problem. Exactly. Exactly. So... <laughs> So then in terms of what the experience then, let's talk about the client first and then we can talk about how advisors might then be able to work alongside this um, because one of the interesting things is that financial advisors actually in Australia and probably unlike maybe anywhere else, lots of advisors avoid property. Like it's one of yeah. those things where they're like, oh, that's a line that's, well, you know, I don't, I'm not an expert, you know, so, so they don't really have a way to assist their clients or at least point them in the right direction. So I do think we can, we'll cover that off in a second, but in terms of the client's experience or the user experience, it starts, 
you know, people might be imagining that it's all tech. Is that the case or is there a human element that comes in at any point in time? Like how does that work from when they're starting on the, you know what, I've got a bit of money and I want to invest in property. What's that journey like? So there's a human element, definitely. So when you join Prop Hero, you get two things. You get access to the app and you Mm -hmm. get a dedicated property coach who will be able to help you throughout the journey. So he will help you define your strategy, uh, explain you why we have selected specific properties for you, and then help you throughout the process to do all the heavy listing for you and reassure you along the journey. What we found is that, uh, and this is especially true when people buy for the first time with Prop Hero. Uh, well, most of our clients have already bought two, three, four, five properties with Prop Hero. And after your first or second one, you're so used to the process and you're like, because now you trust us, you don't really mm. need to talk to your coach. You still have a coach, but you yeah. don't need to talk to your coach. We found that technology, because property is such a big investment, people need to feel that it's not only a machine. And yeah. even on our data models, uh, and you know, I've spent, the, I've, I've spent the past 15 years working in data and AI. And so far, as of like late 2023, the best combination is not data alone or human alone. It's data and humans. And yeah. it's data, a very advanced data model and local property market expertise. When you combine the two, this is how you get the best results. So yeah, it's both tech and human. And to be honest, even though it may not be, uh, um, it may not be uh, um, common to say that, I still feel that it's an edge for us, right? right? Because and it will continue to be because people know that yeah, we have real human beings behind the app. Yeah, yeah, and you for can sure. talk and to I, them. You can talk right, to them. and and. Because let's let's be frank here. I mean, in Australia, or let's we can be even more specific where I am. So I'm in Sydney. If you were going to buy something using Prop Hero, then then and it was all just the tech, then it'd be asking me to use tech to purchase for something over a million dollars. That doesn't feel great. Like exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like well, it, you're oh, right. wait a minute. Like. <laughs> That's, exactly, that feels right? a bit silly, you know. I yeah. like I, even buying a car. People, you know, we still do a test <laughs> drive, you know. Like we still like. I just think that there is, and because a lot of it is emotion too. So property has yeah. so much emotion. It probably has too much. To be fair, yeah. like you say with the data, I think too much of it is about gut, or they walk in and oh, I love those tiles, you know, like those sort of decision making things that really don't factor into return necessarily, yeah. unless you're very good at it. So I love that idea that it's it's putting some weight into the data behind it. But I think the combo of that human element is just yeah. natural because of Definitely. the emotions involved in it. Definitely. And, you know, this is what I love the most, uh, the most about uh, my company is that uh, so we really help people in their lives, right? And, you know, and after investing, they're like so grateful and they actually send us friends and family. So there's like a real human component, but also with our plants. And mm-hmm. even on our product, right? We are like uh, buying like a physical product, something that we, I mean, honestly, I think I know almost, uh, I mean, we've bought over a thousand properties. I think I know most of them, right? I've seen them <laughs> and somehow I feel attached to them. There is something real concrete, real, yeah. really emotional about it. Even though there is data and we buy them because it's great investments. Yes, there's always something special about it. Always. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so... They get all that assistance to buy. Is there then some, an experience? So you go through, right? I'm mean, imagining right, right through to settlement. Then ongoing, is the tool useful then as you've got the property going forward? Does it work alongside property managers? Does it replace some of that element? Like, how does that work on an ongoing sense? So, in short, whatever is needed for the rest of your life related to property, we will do for you. Okay. okay. Um, property management, maintenance, selling insuring, financing, whatever is on the app. You can all not use it, right? But it's here. If you want us to do everything, we'll do everything for the rest of your life, Uh, including having every six to 12 months a catch-up to review your portfolio performance because the app also tells you over time how your wealth is building and how your cash flows are growing over time. So you already know the state of your wealth. Uh, Hmm. That's really like uh, what we do at Prop Zero. Not concretely, what we do is that we don't do everything in-house, right? So we have like right. local partners, local trustworthy property managers who will manage the property for you. You don't have to use them. You can use your own. But if yeah. you want, you can use ours. And, uh, and we actually don't take any kickback or side commission from it. 
we just connect you with these partners because we know they are great and we want you to have an amazing investment journey. So no yeah. side commission, nothing. We just found the best players for every vertical uh, of the industry and we share these players with our uh, clients that so they can have an amazing investment journey. That alone must be quite a task for you and the team because, I mean, anybody who's had to rent property um, will have experienced a broad spectrum spectrum of service from property managers. So I'm betting that's quite an exercise to keep a handle on the ones that actually do really treat it as a, an important role that's that's ongoing and constant. It's part of our business. Right. It's hardest part. And, and again, we don't make money from it right? because we, we, we don't take commission. It's the hardest bit. But we know that finding the right stakeholders is yeah. so hard for people. So we thought, well, yeah. okay, we're going to make money. Uh, 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 each time you, you're going to buy a property on the platform, still we have to help you for the, with the rest. And so yeah. what we do is that we define what we call SLA, so service level agreements with our partners, and we track over time that they uh, do well uh, 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 with, with our clients. But yeah, it's yeah. really hard because yeah, like in the industry, you have a wide array of uh, oh. uh, capabilities. And uh, and yeah, but I'm honestly I'm pretty happy of, of where we are now. You know, it's very rare mm-hmm. for her for us to hear complaints about our partners, right? In the early days, yes. So we had to uh, uh, change a few. Now yep. these days, it's very rare, very very rare. And it is such an important facet, isn't it? Because in an ongoing sense, the behaviour with property manage- con- management can influence expenses, you know, maintenance costs, all those things. If they're yeah. not onto that stuff, then it can go for too long and it suddenly becomes a capital expenditure rather than just a little bit yeah. of maintenance. And also from an income sense, if they're not onto that either, then they can have no warning that somebody needs to move on. Like all those things well yeah. done can yeah. just smooth out yeah. the investment in a significant way. It's You're completely right. And I think that there is – it changes completely your life as an investor if you have a good or a bad property manager. It changes mm. everything. Now, ahead of this, by selecting the right property in the right area, like not in a flood zone, not in a bushfire risk zone, uh, not right. in a climate risk zone, uh, in an area where there's a like, tr- uh, high level of uh, security and tranquility, etc. So you can actually like mitigate some of these uh, things by doing a proper building and pest inspection as well, et cetera, et cetera. So we try to mitigate the initial risk. However, after, yeah, we know that, as you mentioned, having the right property manager changes your life completely, completely, definitely. And it is something that, um, I mean, I've started doing myself when I'm looking, you know, down the track at what we might do personally. And I have started looking at those flood risks, like these things that we sort of all I mean, in Australia, I think we should probably get a bit too numb to those. Like, oh, you know, stuff happens. Well, no. yes, it does, but it doesn't mean you need to let it happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you not can everywhere. Choose. No, exactly. And you can choose locations. Um, yeah. And, and, and it's not you can adjust. The, the, what people sometimes check is the uh, mapping systems today. But right. what you want to do with the acceleration of climate change, you have to look ahead what may happen. Yeah. And I'm stunned that some people still buy in so many areas in so many parts of the country, right? Yeah. They will get flooded. It's not yeah. a possibility. It's a certainty. Don't yeah. buy there, right? But yeah. I think that people are starting to realize, I mean, we've been saying this since, since day one of Prop Hero. I think people are slowly starting to realize it. And I actually think that these areas will like fall completely in price. And yeah. on the flip side, what we call oasis areas, so areas without flood risk, without bushfire risk, without uh, inundation risk, without et cetera, et cetera, these oasis areas, we should have been value. We are certain yeah. about this. and But yeah. not that many people know about it yet, but but yeah, it will for sure. Absolutely. And I think it's um, it's it's an interesting risk return conversation, isn't it? Because there's probably this arbitrage happening at the moment where there'll be areas that are still expensive that have these high risks. And conversely, yeah. Areas that still that that might be less expensive that actually don't have those risks, and so you can probably like you could probably take advantage of some of that. There'll be a window where, like you say, there's less understanding, exactly. But that'll diminish over time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I, I mean, yeah. I'm really convinced about this. I'm really, and you know what? I mean, you we've had like over a thousand clients, right? Uh, and we haven't had a single uh, flooding in our Fantastic. properties, not yeah. a single one, and it's not luck. It's just no. you know, like science, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's not like, yeah. Yeah. And it is, that's where, I mean, tech is so powerful in those areas where you can have, you know, there's, this is the sort of stuff that there's data. 
Yeah, you know, and there is. there's data and there's projections. Like it's yeah. it's all yeah. there. Now, could it be? Could it not catch that weird one-off thing? Sure, but yeah. we're not trying to we're not trying to defend against all things. Yeah. We're trying to defend yeah. against the things we know. You know, that yeah, yeah. we know are there. And I think um, the worst that has ever happened to us was that on the day of settlement, the uh, uh, AC unit broke down. But you said, right. hey, we actually paid for it. You say, hey, look, bad luck for everyone, but look, it's on us. We'll just pay for it because we want to, you to have an amazing experience. But yeah, it's yeah. the world that has ever happened to all of our properties. So, yeah, right. touching wood is going to continue like this. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think luck is really uh, involved in that. No, no, I completely agree. So let's talk then. So that's the client experience. Then for, you know, advisors or practice owners that might be listening, then like I said, you know, it's not something that many financial advisors sort of stick their toe in the water of. They really were like, oh, don't want to go there. But also because, you know, not necessarily having a great solution. Like yeah. it's, I mean, who am I to go go and buy number twenty three on that street in that suburb in that state? You know, like it's a, I don't have, I don't have access to that information. So, how do you see that working well for a practice when they've got clients? Maybe they're looking after their other investments or their retirement or other things they're doing. Well, how do you think, or how have you seen that work well uh, with Prop Hero for their clients? Well, it's funny that you say that because half of our clients come from financial advisors or financial planners or mortgage brokers, right? Okay. Half of our clients. And why? Because as you say, I mean, especially financial uh, advisors, they're not really used to advising their clients on property or they're saying, hey, you should invest in property, but nothing else. The thing is that, well, there is the overall property market and then some players outperform the market, just like for, yeah. for, for any investment. And so um, what happens is that financial advisors typically will start selling us like one or two clients Typically, the very wealthy one where they think, well, if this doesn't work well, well, it doesn't matter. Like this guy can, can, <laughs> can, can actually take it. But then yeah. over time, then very rapidly, they uh, send us many more clients. And why? Because it's a win-win-win relationship. Like, yeah. well, win relationship for them because their clients are happy and outperform the market. Uh, so then they, uh, they, uh, they like trust them even more. Win for the client, of course, who makes a good investment and win for mm-hmm. us because we uh, have another client. And so yeah. now, yeah, like half of our clients come from this channel. And I think that for financial planners, what you really want, or financial advisors, what you really want to make sure is that you're not going to have your clients make a mistake, right? Mm. You want, they want to avoid risk. And so yeah. it actually takes time for us to build relationships. We, of course, start sharing our track record, hundreds and hundreds of properties. We actually share the property addresses, price, pro, price votes, current rent, yield, current valuation, capital growth, right? So we yeah. share that for like hundreds and hundreds of properties. They see that indeed it works. Uh, yeah. And then so they start with one or two and then it grows over time. And I think that it really helps them as well because they know that their clients should invest in property, right? And with leverage, properties, if you do it well, with leverage, properties are unbeatable, right? No other asset class can be as profitable as property because of uh, because of leverage. It's just simple math, right? If you do it well. well. And I think the other thing, I mean, the, the, well, there's a couple of things with property. One, um, you know, for <clears throat> most clients and particularly Australians, for whatever reason, I will, I don't understand it. There's some historical DNA thing with us and property, but anyway, is, is we do have a thing about it, but also we don't have a ticker price above our houses. So what's not happening for investors or clients is they're not seeing that wobbliness, which actually would happen. I mean, if if prices of houses reflected every single thing that could impact their price and we saw it all day, well, we'd be like, wow, property is volatile. Did it mean like, you know, but we're sort of, we're only seeing it. I mean, some people wouldn't, wouldn't look at it more than every 10 years on their home, right? So, yeah. so it's just, it, it really smooths things out. And so then I think the danger of that is then they, they sort of see it as, oh, well, I, I mean, really, I could just buy any property, couldn't I? Like that would be a <laughs> common view, you yeah. know, people and, or, oh, but I'll just go and I'm sure the right one, you know, I'll know which one's right. And of course, most of them, the only property they may have bought would have been their home. And of course, that's a very different decision yeah. to an investment. Sure, there's overlap, but very different um, yeah. because it's covering what otherwise would be a living cost. But for an investment, you know, to, to help them almost take a step back, you know, be far more clinical, be yeah. far more analytical, you know, not let it be yeah. that sort of emoji of, oh, look at this. Wouldn't you love to be here? That's not what we need. <laughs> Yeah. Start with, you know, some of that is useful because if if your renters or your market might view it that way, sure. 
but honestly, it can cloud out all sorts of other things that are not positives. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but, you know. But, but you know what? Like uh, 45% of millennials who buy property now in Australia are rent investors. So they rent in Sydney or Melbourne and they invest somewhere else. Yeah. And this is a complete shift in the market because then you're not buying a house to live in for your family. So there is no more emotion. You just want the highest return possible. And yeah. it's a complete shift in the market. And what we saw is that actually, well, if you have 500K, you can't buy anything in Sydney, right? <laughs> so if you can, so I mean, if you can, uh, uh, if you have like 100K in savings, so then you can borrow 400K more, so you can buy like a 500K property, you cannot buy in Sydney or Melbourne, but yeah. you can buy an amazing property in Brisbane, in Adelaide, or in Perth in ultra fast growing markets. So rather than yeah. investing in Sydney, where prices are already extremely high and are not growing that much anymore, you can buy in very fast growth markets. And that's why so many people now go to the rent vesting uh, route. Uh, and to be honest, I mean, if you have uh, um, 90,000 or 150K in savings, like, I mean, the fact is that you rather not invest in Sydney for like a little studio. You rather have a house in uh, Brisbane or, or in Perth, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and I do think um <clears throat> like you say the power of that is is it's treating it like an actual investment. Exactly. You know, because the, I mean and I've always said this to clients and oh, go in a problem. I'm like, but let's remember that if you buy one investment at like you say let's call it over a million, that's like buying one BHP share for a million. Like it's one. It's not a million of them. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, you've got yeah. to make that choice really well, you know, so yeah, even yeah, yeah. just bringing it down smaller is a smart approach, right? Let's have two at 500K. You know, let's have like, so exactly. So from an investing perspective, that all becomes, you know, just much smarter and reflects yeah. the other investment. Sort Most of, of our approach. investments are actually between 300 and 600K. Most okay. of our investments, because when people have the borrowing capacity for one mil, as you just said, we say, hey, look, it will diversify your risk and it will increase your returns because returns are higher on 500K properties. So if you have a yeah. borrowing capacity of one mil, we actually typically uh, uh, suggest that you buy one 600k house and one 300 or, four, uh, or, or 400k like townhouse or villa somewhere in two different locations with two different cash flow profiles and it will be much more profitable than buying a one mil property by far. Yeah, and, and it's something that I you know lots of people wouldn't know. Like the the yields are not linear related to price. Exactly. It doesn't work that way. You know, it's it's it still might be horrendous and it might seem high when you're a renter, but it's not linear. Yeah, um so you know, not. just because something's bigger doesn't make well more expensive for yeah. a purchase price and doesn't mean fact, they're getting that much. And what we saw in the data for the past like uh, forty years is that you are much more likely to double your investments on a five hundred K property than on a one mil property. So, like, there is much higher chance that so 500k will become one mil, than one mil will become two mil, yeah. because of affordability and how many people can actually afford this jump from 500 to one mil or from one mil to two mil. So, yeah, you are more likely yeah. to double your investment on a smaller investment. Because one the of the super clear. right, and and it's um you know one of the key drivers of of price in that environment is volume of interest. Yeah. And and you, you know the narrower the narrower exactly. the or the higher the price the narrower the number of people and therefore the you know the the less volume of interest and when you I mean the extreme version of that of that is when you look at some of these harbour side sort of waterfront properties on Sydney Harbour and those prices can wobble by huge amounts yeah. huge amounts because there's like three people yeah. ever that will yeah. ever buy them like yeah. like not that year i mean ever so yeah. so you know if that if nobody's interested well your property's going to come down you know we value a lot so yeah, yeah it's a all so okay so that's all part of what they're going to then experience with that conversation they have drawing out what their goals are you know what they're trying to achieve so that makes sense is there any visibility for the advice, for, for example, they say, okay, you know, client, we think, you know, go and check out Propera. We think we could, this could be helpful. Is Do you have any visibility for the advisor on that or is it something they just get via the client, any of that information or, or you know, updates on how things are going? Yeah, so we can actually like share. So uh, on the app, whenever we find the property that matches your brief, on the app, you can see all the analysis about this property. So uh, all the uh, numbers and uh, insights from our data models, you can find them in the app so that you can make an informed decision. And you can share what we call this property profile, like very advanced sale property profile with your family, friend, and property advisor or, 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 okay. or, or wealth advisor. So, so yes, you can yeah. indeed share it so they can see, oh, yes, 
this is an amazing investment because of this, 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 etc. And we have over 200 parameters. So we try to uh, synthesize the information in the app. Of course, we don't want to drown people with uh, data, but, but <laughs> yeah, so the idea is that um, if, if you want something very basic, you can have it in the header of the property. If you're, if you're really into data, into numbers, you can really like, drill down in the app and see all the results why we see that amazing investment. And you can share this with family, friends, or your wealth advisor. Perfect, perfect. And then in terms of, you know, looking forward to, you know, for the app, clearly, I mean, you know, world domination, go on to lots of different regions. I love the, like lots of people are considering um, property in other locations. I mean, there's all sorts of consequences of that. And so they're going to need to get good tax advice and all sorts of things. But um, I do think, I mean, I literally spoke to actually somebody I know socially the other day who just said, but I, it actually wasn't about buying property. It was about renting where they're talking about, well, do I move to Bali and work virtually out of there? Because rent here is getting, getting so expensive for the lifestyle they want, yeah. you know, and, and there is going to be more and more of that and similarly with properties. So aside from that, you know, in terms of locations, what else is on the sort of development path for Propero? What's What have you got in the future? So we, I mean, we've got a, like a, a big, big tech development plan. Uh, one thing that we want to, uh, to do is to connect um, our partner services directly in the app. So, you know, like right now, let's say you need uh, financing on your, uh, on your investments. We will connect you to our, one of our broker partners, right? So we will like, uh, uh, send you to them. Uh, what we would like is to integrate this journey in the app. So then you don't have right. like to even like maybe like talk to someone else or you can if you, if you need. But if you want to do it like literally, you can. Same thing for home insurance. Right now, we, we, we send you to one of our partners. So that's like, um, like connecting these uh, partners to our app uh, more and more. The, the second thing we would like to do is, you know, so as I mentioned, a big pain when you start investing in property is that you don't know how much you're really worth and how much cash flows right. you're getting. You can actually track this wealth and cash flows on the app. Uh, but when it comes to cash flows, you actually have to manually enter your rent and expenses. Um, yep. What we want is to connect to, to offer the possibility to connect to your bank accounts directly so that you, we can actually do the uh, checking for you that you have received right. your end, that you have paid your expenses, etc. So yeah. on the development path for uh, for the next few months, which will, I mean, again, it will be like optional, but uh, it will avoid having you to manually enter, even though it takes like two seconds, uh, your <laughs> rent and expenses. And is there anything else that's really blue sky that isn't sort of more like we're just getting to it, you know, it's part of the process. Is there anything way further down the track that you'd sort of love to get to for Propira? Yes, we have uh, something very, very big coming, but I don't want to, uh, to mention this <gasps> now. But yeah, like something that will be like, uh, I think, unique in the world. Uh, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's one thing now. One thing I didn't awesome. mention that we also like, we do that no one else does is that actually you can, you already today, you can, if you download the Propiro portfolio app, if you already own properties, you can connect them on the app and get, get these insights on your wealth and cash flows. And this is globally. If you own any property anywhere around the globe, you can connect them to the Prop Hero portfolio app and it's completely free. So uh, yeah, and no one else does it in the world. So yeah, any property you own anywhere around the globe connected to the Prop Hero portfolio app. Perfect. Anything else we've missed? Anything else that you think the sort of uh, advisors listening or the, the financial advice professionals sort of listening need to understand or should be aware of? So look, I think that the, so the reason why we created Prop Hero was to shake this industry, which we thought was uh, old school and non-transparent. <laughs> yeah. What I'm really proud of is that our clients buy and they buy more and they refer family and friends. And I think they do this because they have transparency and confidence in what they buy. When you join the Prop Hero, uh, when you join Prop Hero, because we will share with you all the insights, all the data, you know what you're buying. So you know right. why you're making a great investment. And I think just beyond making great investment, knowing that you're making a great investment and knowing why uh, brings this transparency in the industry, which I think no one else uh, brings. And I think yeah. so. I feel, yeah, like not only do we make good, inv great investments for our clients, but also they are happy and they enjoy the process. And I think this is something that I'm really proud of because, yeah, honestly, it's not how the industry used to work. So, yeah, I think, well, if you're a first-time investor or a seasoned investor, well, you are going to outperform the market with us and we'll, especially if you're a first-time investor, we'll make this journey so easy, so simple and so time efficient. Um, if, you're a pro if you're a wealth advisor or a wealth planner, well, just reach out to us. We'll explain you how we work, why we think we are doing the right thing for others. 
Uh, and yeah, I'd like to happy to, to, to start working with you guys. Perfect. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Prop Hero, then the website link is in the episode show notes. We've also added um, Michael's LinkedIn details. I'm sure he'd be happy for you to reach out and he'll point you to the right person to have a chat with. Um, thank you so much for joining us here today and really sharing how, you know, Prop Hero might be another uh, tool in the tool belt for financial advisors. And like you, I love the fact that it can make things more transparent. You know, we can stop this being some sort of mystical art um, exactly. of property investing and it can actually be accessible to all sorts of people and they can make smart decisions just like we encourage them to make into all sorts of other assets. So thank you so much for your time, Michael. Thanks, Peter. Thanks so much. Okay. So are any of you out there already um, pointing your clients towards Prop Hero or even a tool like it? Um, you know, I'd love to hear what what you found works or what works for you or what d- didn't work. You know, all those sort of things we'd love to hear from you um, because this is an area that's interesting, isn't it? And and you know, at, you know, in terms of my thoughts on it, I love the idea of depth of analysis. I mean, we do such wonderful uh, investment analysis on funds and sh- all sorts of things that we do for our clients as part of their reviews, as part of, you know, all that sort of thing we do. Um, property is this sort of gray mystical art as part of that. And so to have something that does make that more scientific, that gives the clients the options when, particularly when they're investing to really approach it in quite a clinical and smart way, that's a bit exciting, you know, and I think, um, then to actually take them on a journey, they're getting their handhold through the process. Let's weed out some of that emotion that makes people act rashly. I mean, we must have all seen that, right? Where somebody's rushing to do something, they end up rushing to buy property, almost any property, and they just want to get in, you know? So so I think there is some power to that. The thing I would say is this is another one of those tools much like others interviews I've done, you know, previously where it does come down to who your niche is and what their real challenges are. So what challenges are they facing and how can you assist? And sometimes you're going to need other tools in your tool belt to be able to, you know, provide extra service to them. So, you know, it may be that you have older clients who you don't feel now are doing investing in property or have already or whatever. But actually, when you ask them questions about the help they need, they said, well, actually, I'd like to be able to give my kids some help into this. So maybe the parents pay for the kids to get assistance with buying their first investment property. So, you know, really, if we ask the right questions of where, you know, help is needed for our niche, then you can start to collect these things together that will just solve these problems for them. So that's certainly how we're approaching it um, in in our business. And, you know, it's really, honestly, it surprised me. Uh, there's been certain times where there's things I never would have picked for that particular demographic, for that particular age, that they say, look, this actually would make a massive difference. So ask those questions, draw them out on the, on the challenges they're facing and see how you can factor in some of these tools into and solving those challenges. Now, You know what time it is, folks. We're Bionic Advisors. It's time to build that uh, avid curiosity habit with today's Curiosity Corner website. And this week, I'd love you to take a look at Fame Wall. Now, you can find it at famewall.io. That's F A M E. Fame as in dancing movie for the people old enough to know what that is, or fame as in famous people. Um, Famewall.io. And their tagline is. Collect testimonials effortlessly and use them to get more customers. Now, I don't know about you, but collecting testimonials and using them well has been one of those things on the to-do list that f- just hasn't quite got there for us. Um, we've been trying to build out a process. We've been trying, you know, the Google reviews, all sorts of things to try and really get some structure to this. And so I came across this tool and thought, ooh, this is interesting. So... What happens is once you've set up the app, then you can share a simple link with a client um, and get them to share a testimonial. Now, okay, well, is that a big deal? You know, what's what, why is that a good thing? Well, when they get sent the link, then they can type a testimonial. It'll even let them record a video with one click and it just does the video um, of them talking through their testimonial, you know, that all sounds really good, right? So it's really simple. They do it in the moment. Um, But it can also import social proof from platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter. You might get somebody saying, whoa, this was really good. So you can feed that through. Um, And then once you've got the testimonials and the tool also helps you turn them into 
images. So whether it's particular backgrounds or it's got widget types, so you could make the testimonials look like, you know, movie awards things, you know, when it's got the sort of curly thing on the edges and it makes it look great, or it's got the five star thing above it, or maybe you want it to look like a tweet. Like it's got all sorts of widget types that can make it look a certain way. And then you can use those, of course, just as images, but also you could have this sort of wall of moving. You would have seen them on websites when they've got, you know, these updated testimonials. Well, Famewell does that as well. So I had no clue that something like this existed. Um, and now that I do, I have immediately added it into our project list um, because we were about to build out a whole process and how do you need to get handed over to so-and-so and then we've got to do this. And I'm like, well, if this can just, you know, hey, when this happens, send this link to that client, right, and just let it happen. Um, that to me is exciting. Uh, and, you know, if we can encourage them to do that and just build up that bank of testimonials, it's great. You know, you can get out how, you know, and really let clients understand uh, who it works for, who your service works for, and so you can attract more of those people. Um, well, look, that's all we've got for this week, folks. So be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And look, a lot of us are on this journey of understanding and seeing what's going on with AI. Uh, we know we need to put clients at the center of all of this. And part of this is also future-proofing our practices so that they can sort of be nimble and dynamic enough to power through this. So uh, therefore, I've pulled together a new keynote for 2024 um, called AI Ready Advice Thriving in the Era of Artificial Intelligence. This is partially about, hey, what's out there, but more about what can you do in the practice? How can you set it up? How should your business be set up so that as these things come out and they're going to constantly be coming out all the time, then you are ready to either take advantage of them, assess them and put them on the project list or you know decide not to do it. So you'll have a real way to just have everything ready to then rocket as these opportunities come up and to do it such that you're not taking extra risk within the practice. So if you're curious about that, then please do reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. And I'd love to have a chat. Now, otherwise, I'll look very much forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 